I'm about winning. And winning is a bigger win when you show other people how to win. Kevin Hart, welcome to the School of Greatness. Thank you so much for being here, my man. I appreciate it. Thank you so much for having me. I loved that you came out with this audio book, The Decision, because it was exactly what people I feel like need more of from you, is this kind of bigger brother talk of here's all the mistakes that I've made in my life, and here's what you shouldn't do, and yeah. here's what you should do. Yeah. So I'm, I'm glad you finally came out with this, uh, this book, man. Uh, you know, I think there's, a, there's so many different reasons, you know, that – that are behind the, the development of this particular project. I mean, I think the, the main one comes from me just really being in a uh, place of disbelief of just how, how the times are, are changing and how much people are, you know, I think, I think we've, we've lost a level of normalcy. We've, we've lost a level of normalcy uh to the point where everybody's held to these standards that aren't realistic mm -hmm. you know you're 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 held to the highs of the high without ever asking to be or without ever saying that you should be you know like it's 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 kind of it's kind of crazy and i think because of that so many people are are now getting in their way so many people are getting in their own way you know um and it's because of the judgment it's because of the fear of what you think people think yeah. um, the fear of the conversation that you have no idea about or you know or control over it's a fear but it's you in your own head and what i found with me through all the ups and downs, and there's definitely a lot of ups and there's a lot of downs, you know, I've been able to, to realize that some things you just can't change and the thing that you can't change, you can't control, you can only get past and attempt to do better moving forward. And that's kind of what I've held on to in life. And that's what's helped me get to where I am today. And this doesn't mean that I'm at some amazing place and standing on some amazing mountain and screaming down below. It just means that I have information that I think is valuable and that I think some people may want to hear. Mm -hmm. And, you know, if, if that's the case, then it's just a way to, to develop some mental fitness that, that you may not have known that you have the ability to do. Yeah. That's powerful, man. I love that. I love that during the audiobook process, you're making me laugh pretty much the whole time while you're teaching me a lesson of a mistake you made yeah. and you're telling it in a funny way so that we don't do the same thing ourselves. Something you mentioned about self-doubt. I think this is huge for people to understand. You, you seem like a guy who is, has zero self-doubt. Mm -hmm. And at the same point, you talk about the, the being liked and likable the difference between being liked and likable. Mm -hmm. As a comedian growing up, you had to do so many horrible shows where three people were in attendance, one person, whatever, 10 people, and it didn't go well. Mm -hmm. People aren't standing up laughing. They're not giving you standing ovations. They're, they're booing, whatever it is. How do you get to the point where you show up day in, day out, every night to these places if you're not being liked or likable and no one's giving you reassurance that you're actually any good in the beginning? You know, I think that for me, uh, the, the best thing is this. is like, look, I understand that everybody's not going to like you. Mm -hmm. that's, that's, that's a fact. Everybody's not going to like you. And there was one moment where I felt like everybody was supposed to. I felt like really everybody is supposed to like me. Man, I'm a nice guy. I'm a lovable, nice guy. Why wouldn't you like me? What I found, I was like, look, everybody's not going to like you. Mm -hmm. And and you can't change that. You can't control that. So it's my job to be happy with my attempt mm -hmm. and what it is that I'm trying to do. That's my job. So, you know, as you're going to perform at said shithole or said small environment, mm -hmm. I realized that each one of those opportunities was a way for me to work on me, my craft. 
And I'm supposed to take something out of that moment that's good. Whether it's two laughs, whether it's 20, whether it's 100, I have to take something away from this experience and, and basically hold on to it and improve off of that. Yeah. If, if I go do these things and everything about these things are always bad, well, that means that I'm, I'm doing something wrong. Right. They can't always be bad. There has to be something good that's coming out of it. I'm just not, I'm not searching for it. So I found a way to search for the good. I found a way to search for, you know, the, the positive side of my experiences, yeah. whether they're good or bad, there's a way to search for the good shit. And as I continue to do that, I developed a, a high level of shoulder shrug. Yeah. You know, but that's not easy to do when you're, I mean, a foot shorter than all the comedians out there. There's no one that's, you know, people are just doubting you. You were talking about in your book how you can't even get an audition in the early days to mm -hmm. the movie side of things. How do you increase confidence in yourself when there's just no, 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 no? Well, because everybody's story is different. Everybody's story is different. And what I find is that it takes time for everyone. For everyone. Nobody, nobody... Even the easiest road is still met with some degrees of difficulty. Mm -hmm. At somewhere, some point, you're going to go into some degree of difficulty. For example, I'm watching, uh, you know, the Jordan documentary. Oh, man, Last Dance. It's amazing. Did you finish it? Right? I'm going to tell you what I realized from the Jordan documentary. Wow. It's so dope. So amazing. You want to know who I've been actually in awe of since watching this? Steve Kerr. Oh, man, the last two episodes with him, he's unbelievable. Steve Kerr, people don't even realize this, Steve Kerr is sitting on eight championships. <laughs> eight Machine. championships. Listen, four with the Bulls, one with the Spurs, and he has three with the Warriors. But in between all of that, what seems like an easy road, a great road, you find out that Steve got punched in the face by Michael Jordan, <laughs> and you find out that this, there was these bumps along the way that you would have never known. From the outside, you would have never known that Mike challenged Steve and the pressure that Steve felt when he was on his franchise to do certain things, and I didn't have the athleticism. If I got passed the ball, I had to hit the shot. You only had five shots a game, all five that, yeah. Five shots a game, but if I missed any of those shots, the ball wasn't coming my way anymore, so I had to make sure – you would have never known. You would have never known. I say that to say and use it as an example for there are no easy roads. Yeah. So when I was coming up and I'm not getting the auditions, or I'm not getting the opportunities, I had to say to myself, it's going to come. Mm. If I put the work in, it has no choice but to come. Now, as I'm saying that and doing that, I'm looking around. There's certain comedians that were doing the same stuff over and over again for years on years on years. Certain comedians that felt comfortable with just making whatever the money was. It wasn't about the money, it was about the craft. So I knew that if I got better at the craft that I would eventually get to the money. And that's what my focus was. Granted, I'm a part of a very small percentage and I, you know, you have to attach some luck to it. Mm -hmm. and, and the hard work with the luck is an amazing collaboration. Yeah. So it ended up paying off, but I knew what I had to do. So there were no other options. I didn't have other baskets with eggs in it. This was it. There was no backup, plan, no backup plan. So you weren't thinking of like, oh, I'm going to go to a job here. This is the only thing I've got. No. no. Now, when you were getting, you know, booed at and it wasn't going your way for years, was it your mom that you come back to and say, well, I still believe in you. You're funny. You, you've got this. Did you have a, a group of friends that would actually encourage you? Or were they kind of saying, what are you doing this for? You know, go get a real job. There were no, there were no other options, right? And there was nobody to really lean on because nobody saw the gold in comedy. Mm. You know, when you're trying to, you tell your friends or – or your family members that you're doing stand up comedy. It's not like everybody's no about, <laughs> yeah. about to be a, a millionaire. You're going to make it all. Nobody says that. They're like, what? 
You tell them, yeah. fuck, no, it's good luck with that, buddy. Nobody sees huh. the light at the end of that tunnel. So that's that's a vision that you have. Wow. And that you have to hone in on. Because nobody else has that. How did you see that? That this is something you can make potentially a lot of money with or a, enough to live? I loved it. Mm. I loved it. And there were people who did. So they obviously, there's obviously a, a, a world of revenue that funnels through comedy. Why do all these comedy clubs all over exist? Mm -hmm. Why do these colleges book comedians every year and the colleges have to spend a certain amount of money on entertainment? Why are comedians the ones that are best suitable for hosting jobs, personality driven jobs, et cetera? Radio personalities. There's so many doors that get open. Talk shows, yeah. Yeah, from the world of comedy. So when you look at that and you realize that, it's just about figuring out how to get there. Yeah. That's the hardest part. How do yeah. you get there? How do you go down that road? What are the what are the goals? What are the accomplishments that are baby accomplishments, but that become bigger? The first one is getting into the comedy clubs. If I can get into the comedy clubs, that's major. Now I'm a working comedian and I'm I'm working. Am I a regular uh host? Am I the comedy clubs feature. All right, that's here. So now how do I work on being a headliner? Mm. Let me get some material. So that way when I do get the opportunity, I'm ready. Yeah. Oh, wait, but how do people come see me? I got to figure that out. Oh, shit, I'm going to start doing what? I got to get, I got to get my likeliness up at the time. This is, mm. these are all little hills that you have to climb, but after climbing them, they pay off. Do you think it was harder for you to learn how to be a great comedian or learn about the business of building your personal brands, your audience, selling tickets, marketing, sales, packaging, positioning? Which one was harder? Becoming a good comedian is definitely the hardest. Comedy doesn't come easy. Yeah. You know, the most talented. You still got to learn how to be a comedian. You still have to learn how to tell a joke. You still got to know the beginning, middle, and end, a punchline, a segue, a set. You still have to do all those things. So, you know, we're in one of the most critiqued professions in the world. You know, if you're not funny, boo you. Boo. It's the easiest shit in the world. Boo. It's the easiest shit to do in the world. Uh, it takes a lot of skill and, and craftsmanship to to be a good comedian mm -hmm. um you know so honing in on that craft and and perfecting that craft or doing your best attempt to that's a that's a job within itself making people laugh is easy if you're funny naturally funny but being comedian is a different ball game mm. I've got kind of a personal question for you I want to ask you about. I don't have kids. I've got a girlfriend, just moved in a few months ago. Um, I'm curious, and I ask this to a lot of successful men out there in the world. Mm -hmm. I'm curious, do you think that you'd be able to build the empire you have as a single man with essentially, quote unquote, more time to go out and do the things you want to do, master your craft, build your business? Or do you believe that having a great family, a great wife is the key to part of your success and growth as well. It's, I think that you, you definitely need that. You know, um, you have to understand the amazing benefit that goes within a strong, a strong woman in your corner. And, and here's what I mean by that, okay? You know, can you be single and have success? Of course, there's several people out there that, that do. Um, can you also not be focused? Absolutely. You know, the world of fun is never ending mm -hmm. if you want it to be. Every night can be a fantastic night but every morning can be a, a rough, groggy one, mm. you know? And, and that's what the single life, that's the attraction. It's just freedom. And there's, there's an amazing reward that comes within that. Um, 
But for, for me, I don't, I don't want that. I wouldn't be good with that. And I don't think that the level of success that I have reached, I would have been able to reach with really easy, with a crazy amount of freedom. Now, granted, fucking human, that there's nobody that's going to get thrown a curveball of success, fame, money, popularity, and not fall victim to any of the consequences. Mm-hmm. You eventually will. You will. It's just, it's no way, it's no way around it, especially if you're younger. You will. And after you fall victim to whatever consequences, and there's so many different variations of them, you know, consequences can be uh, spending money and, and, you know, not realizing the things that came with making money and blowing that load. Uh, it could be drugs. It could be being mean and ignorant to people. It could be uh, infidelity. It could be, you know, you, there, there's so many different things, you know, um, uh, kids all over. You could, there's so many fucking different things <laughs> that, can, that can act as a consequence mm-hmm. you know, to, to the, I guess you could say the, the freedom and opportunities that come because of your freedom with success. Yeah. I personally, I, I needed the gotta get home, gotta be home, can't do. Did that stop me from being a dickhead in a couple of places? No. Uh, you know, did I learn from my mistakes? Of course. Uh, are there mistakes that I would take back if I could? No, I wouldn't. Because I wouldn't be able to, to, to understand at the level that I do now. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, so without those fucking mistakes and hard punches in the stomach of reality of life, then you don't have any space to grow. You don't, you don't have a fucking lesson to learn. So I can't say that I would have been able to achieve. Mm. Cause you, and you also need that, you need the security of an environment that's a good environment and not an environment created off of what you have, mm-hmm. who you are. Right. And if you're engulfed in that world, you know, temptation left and right. And, and how much of it is for you as an individual and as a good person mm-hmm. and how much of it is influenced by the world that you're in and what you have. Yeah. I love what you said here. And earlier you talked about the expectation that people have as human beings is so great right now. It's so high that, mm-hmm. The world is judging everyone who has any influence to be perfect on every level of every word they say, action they take. And yet, what I'm hearing you say is you need to fail. You need to make mistakes. You need to be an idiot sometimes so you have perspective. And it sounds like for the next decade, two, maybe more, you're going to make a lot more mistakes. I mean, you don't don't know what you're going to do. Like, that's the the fucking amazing thing about life. Like, that's the – that's literally – the amazing thing about life. You have no idea. It's your job to try to do your best to grow and to set up whatever you can for those around you. Mm. And if you don't have people around you, then you're living for yourself. But it's your job to do the best that you can in doing that. Yeah. Along the way, you gotta, you're, you're going to fucking... You're going to make mistakes. Here, here's the shit that, that is so simplistic that people just don't get. Mm. Who do you think plans to go to fucking jail? <laughs> Who? No what, one. What, what bank robber do you think ever put the plan together to rob a bank to get caught after? Mm. Not many. Who, you don't think they all think that they're going to be the ones to get away? <laughs> right. Yeah, do, you don't think that in their mind 
this is this is going to be a life changing moment. You don't think that people that overdose on drugs think that there's no shock that it can happen to them. Mm. You don't think that there's there's actual mistakes that happen within bad decision making. There is. You don't think that the person that bungee jumped thought that this would come back up. You think that person knew it was snap? Mm. These are all just really just fucking examples that I'm pulling out of my ass. But these are all fucking examples. Yeah. You know, my little girl, my daughter, she went to go pet a dog and the dog started growling and barking real crazy. My daughter ain't went to go pet a dog since. She <laughs> think that she thought in her mind that this dog is nice because all dogs are supposed to be nice. It's not until you see that they're not that you know that they're not. Mm. So I say all that to say, you have to experience some down to know why you're getting up. Mm -hmm. You know, like this, this whole, the whole thing of a cancel culture and the consequences being so severe for so many, it's fucking ridiculous. Do I think that there should be consequences for people's actions? Absolutely, absolutely. But are you telling me that you should never be able to recover from a mistake? Then why the fuck do people go to jail? Right. Aren't you supposed to go to jail? To learn. Yeah. To learn from your fucking mistakes so you can get out and then do better. Mm -hmm. That's what this whole reform thing is. It's like you send me to jail to go do better and get better. And then I come out and because I was in jail, nobody wants to allow me to get better. It's a backwards thing. So yeah. are, are we teaching lessons or not? Are we, do we want people to improve or do we not? Right. What are we, what are we saying? How do you, yeah. How do you personally handle the emotional side or the weight or the pressure of media or whatever, just the online internet world uh, or potential sponsors or brands or shows they are saying like, oh, you're in the middle of some adversity right now or some controversy how do you personally deal with the emotional weight to yeah. not let it affect you? Because it seems like you just continue to thrive no matter what mistake you make here or there. Well, it's, it's A, there is no pressure. Hmm. And, and, and here's what I mean when I say there's no pressure. Okay? If you make a bed, lay in your bed. Bottom line, you made it, lay in it. Mm -hmm. Okay? So in laying in that bed, whatever comes with it is what you're willing to take because you made it. Mm. right now yes i have to maneuver differently yes i have to make sure i carry myself in a certain way i'm a ceo i'm a brand i'm a business and there's a lot of layers that go underneath the machine that that runs the world of of kevin hart now uh there's a lot of people that are involved in that world so i don't have the fuck it, fuck it attitude. But I do have an attitude of I've done my share of shit and in doing it, I've addressed it. And in addressing it, I made my share of mistakes within addressing it, learned from that too. I've done all of that. None of this stuff has affected the character that I have. None of it has affected me to start to doubt me. Mm, really? I, who I am. You never doubt yourself after all never this stuff. Doubt, you wow. Know, I know who I am. I know what I am. And in knowing what I am and who I am, you can go look in the mirror and go, oh, that was a dumb move. Oh, you're, you're a jackass. <laughs> I'm not a bad person. Mm. So within my relationships and partnerships, I think that I've done a good job of letting, you know, them all know who I am and they see who I am and we have a really good relationship. So in the future, moving forward, I have a job to do to protect those relationships because I care about them. I value them. Right. So, so I can't just, I can't just move willy-nilly because that means that i'm not 
I'm not staying true to my relationships. And, and that's what the older you get and the more you experience things you learn, mm -hmm. not just about you. It's about others that can be affected by what you do. So mm -hmm. now I see that, I understand that. The younger version of me didn't see that or understand that. And there was a high level of, fuck it, man. Look, I'm not going to deal with this because this ain't got shit to do with, with this. Or not. And that's not the right attitude. But if I didn't have the wrong attitude when I had it then, and if I didn't understand what I know now, I wouldn't be prepared for this next wave of, of shit that may be coming my way or may not. Right. But if it does, I'm prepared for it now. I'm at least prepared. I'm at least, I'm in a different space of understanding. I'm in a different space of knowledge. Mm -hmm. It's almost like going back to the last dance, you know, Jordan was talking about the, you know, when he had to go through all of it publicly, how much that took a toll on him at first, but then it gave him the experience for the future and for his friends when they went through scandals and stuff to be able to be a leader in that situation and have more knowledge. And it sounds like you're in that situation right now. Uh, I'm curious about your wife. I asked this, uh, The Rock did a live uh, about a month ago on his Instagram. And I asked a question on there and he answered it. And it was a really powerful response. And I'm curious what yours is to this question. The question is, what is the thing you admire the most about your wife that most people don't know about? Strongest person in the world. Strongest person in the world. And her, her understanding for reality versus false reality hmm. is so crystal clear. You know, it's not, it's a, it's a tough seat to sit in, um, you know, being my wife. Hmm. It's a tough seat to sit in. You know, we're, we're, it's, it's, it's crazy to say this, but there's this, there's this movie that people love to watch and it's called The Rise and Fall. Mm. And the tickets to the rise are sold out, but the tickets to see what a fall looks like, I mean, you're talking about a sellout on top of a sellout. I mean, it's, it's the most watched thing ever. So naturally when you get to a certain space or a certain level, you know, I don't know why, but there's a, there's a root against, and she experienced a lot of that, you know, a lot of, a lot of that turmoil that we went through, you know, it's girl, don't be with no man that's going to disrespect you or don't do this or don't do that. It's almost like a lot of people are against her for, yeah. It's insane. It's, it's insane. And, you know, the, the one thing we had a talk and the, the one, the one thing that I told my wife, I said, whatever you do, I'm, I'm here. I'm going to be supportive of, you know, whatever you do, if you decide that you want to go and leave the honey, by all means, no matter what she's taken care of, mm -hmm. no matter what, you're the mother of my child. You know, my ex-wife now, we're not together, but she's taken care of. Mm -hmm. Mother of my kids. I'm not, I'm not a bad person. So I said, that's, this isn't about money. This is about you, your emotions or whatever. But understand the best company to a lonely woman is another lonely woman. Mm -hmm. And I said, Look at all the advice that you're getting. Wow. And look at the lives of the people giving the advice. And you tell me how many of them mm. are, in a, are in a relationship right. that's, that can be considered a solid household, mm. a marriage or anything. You show, and, and if you don't see that, Separate yourself from that for a second and then make a decision. And what she looked at at the time, all of the negative energy and negative information came from people that didn't have 
that. So people that don't have that don't understand why you don't want to let that go. Because you have something that you're actually building and working on. Right. And she came to an amazing conclusion. Um, I like the fact that we have a family, that we have a household. And I like the fact that we now got a job to do to get better. Mm. And and that's what you owe me. You mm. owe me the get better. Mm. And help me accountable. It wasn't a walk in the park. But it was her understanding, but we don't let the outside world affect our inside. And I credit her for setting that wow. For setting that tone. And what's the biggest lesson you've learned from her personally in the last few years with the, the challenges, the ups and downs? If if a pregnant woman went through what she went through. Mm delivered a, a, a healthy baby, uh, one, an amazing mother to not just her child, but my two kids, which she acts as a stepmother, stepped up on so many different levels while taking one of the biggest punches in life. What, what the fuck? I mean, I don't know. I don't know what's stronger. Mm. You know what I mean? Like that's just supposed to break. Yeah. So you really get to see who people are when adversity fucking puts itself on display. Yeah. Who 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 are you and who are we? And you know, I've had to do the same where I've had to fucking really ask myself, who am I when shit really hit the fan? You know, when these moments hit, when these things hit, there's a reason why not many people get up after. Hmm. A lot the of people reason, don't get up. The reason why a lot of people don't get up, these things are, are hard things to overcome and deal with. They're very hard. Yeah. So when you, when, you, when you do make it out of those storms, and when you are an individual that can go, wow, I can't believe we experienced that. And you look back and go, oh my God, that was how many years ago? But look at us now. Mm. Look at where we are now. That's a, that's a thing. That's, a, that's something to hold on to. Yeah. And what I've noticed is <clears throat> you almost want to have friends who have gone through adversity because you, you start to learn about who your friends truly are at your lowest times, right? Some character. I mean, my kids... Me and my kids had a talk the other day. Um, you know, they, they, they had an attitude. They're going through some stuff. I think the, the craziest thing is, you know, they were going through something and they were like really down about it. They were just pissed. Mm -hmm. They want to do something. And I'm like, that's the thing that's crazy that you guys don't understand. I was like, Yo, life is so not perfect. Life is so not perfect. I said to you guys, you've only seen perfect. You, you haven't seen success. Yeah. You haven't seen challenges. And I said, this is an example of a challenge. I said, and now in dealing with this, mm. I'm going to use a phrase and that phrase is cowboy up. Mm -hmm. It's in your, it's in your my, auto book. Yeah. My son, you know, to my son and my daughter. And it's like, yo, cowboy the fuck up. And right now you're living in a time where if you say that you have some people that are challenged, don't talk to kids. What does that mean? Hey, I'm going to tell you what it means. Cowboying up means strap up your boots and get to work. You, you get it done. Whether you like it or not, you got to get it done. In this case, go through your turmoil. But unfortunately, dad can't be here to pick up the pieces. Mm. Go through it. These are the things that make you better. These are the things that give you character. You'll learn from it later. And I really embraced that moment because I'm like, this is a lesson. They'll get to walk out of this. And I said, it may not hit today. It may not hit next week, but eventually it's going to hit. Mm -hmm. I know my lessons have hit. I can tell you my wife has learned shit that acted as lessons that have hit. But if you don't embrace those moments, then, you, then you're, you're missing out on the beauty of life. Yeah, You're missing out on the on the lessons that come with it 
Mm. And I just think it's a great opportunity for me to highlight a lot of moments and give people a understanding and visual as to how I dealt with, where I got the strength to move on and how, uh, why understanding me and myself is the most beneficial thing that I've ever done in my life. Mm. You know, and, and, and this is <clears throat> just information. This isn't a way that you have to live. Yeah. This isn't a fucking book that you got to follow or else you're going to lose. No, it's just information. So many people are afraid to give and share information. I'm not, I'm just sharing information. Yeah. You got a lot of, uh, I lo I'm loving these stories. I really appreciate it. You have, um, you're very public about your lifestyle, the things you do, how you work out. You know, you're posting a lot of things all the time on social media and you talk more in this book about the mindset of things. I'm curious mm -hmm. if you can share the non-negotiables for you on a daily basis internally on the inside of your mind, of your heart, of your soul. What are the things that you need to do? I know externally you're working out consistently. You're doing certain things. You're doing the hard work physically, but internally, do you say something to yourself? Do you mentally take notes about, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hug and kiss my wife and kids every morning? Is that, what are the non-negotiables on a day-to-day -day basis for you that make you better? No day starts without uh, me working on myself, which is a workout. You know, my workouts just have a, a meaning, and that meaning is self improvement. Mm -hmm. It's not necessarily just about the look, it's about my mind, it's about knowing that I'm getting up and I am putting some effort and energy into me at the top of my day, making sure that my wife and my kids. Know that I love them on a day-to-day -day basis. You don't know what life has planned. So there is no day that should go by without that communication. Um, and I'll say now, really focusing and thinking on the future, mm. but also processing the now. How does that look? Yeah, it's like, well, the future, the future looks bright because I wanted to be bright. And that's the thing, like those dreams become reality if you really do believe them and if you put the work into them. You can't just dream just a dream. You can't just dream and expect it to show up. That's not, that's two different, you can't do that. It's, mm -hmm. Oh my God, I, I dream of one day having, well, what are you doing to make that dream come true? It doesn't just, it doesn't, that's not how it works. Something has to be put into execution to make a dream happen. So, and understanding that, what are my affirmations? What are the things that I'm, that I'm speaking on? What are the things that I want? What's the, what's the energy that I'm putting out there? to myself, to my team, to my family. Like, what, do, what am I working on? 40 years old, what does it look like at 50? Mm. You know, am I done at 50? Am I working to be done at 50? If so, what should I have by that time? Where should I be at at 45? Like, these are the things that I just, I take a lot of pride and energy and effort into vetting out and into thinking. So a lot of the things that you see me do these aren't impromptu moments. This stuff is well thought out, calculated. It's, it's been on purpose for quite some time. Yeah. What are you dreaming about for the next 10 years for your future? Um, I think the biggest one is just my business surpassing my celebrity. Mm. You know? What, is that, what does that mean in terms of revenue, in terms of... Well, a lot of a lot of people think it's just the money. Like I was saying, you know, I want to be a billionaire. And it's not just about the money that comes with being a billionaire. It's about the story attached to my name. Mm -hmm. You know, it's about where I come from, what I did, and about the younger kids that can go, wow, it's a it's possible. Mm-hmm. Right. It's 
achievable. It's it's possible, and it's something that not many of my particular people get the opportunity to do or or be a part of. It's a it's a world um, that is very far, few, and in between. Mm-hmm. So if I can get in that world and show the blueprint as to how along the way, create jobs and, and change lives, then that's an amazing moment. That's an amazing thing. Do you, have a, do you have a date that you would like to be a billionaire by? Is there a year, a date? Have you thought about that? Oh, shit, the world was perfect today at three o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> but if you're dreaming of the future, what would it look like for you if you could be a billionaire? <laughs> By when? I'm just curious. I mean, look, in, in 10 years, in a perfect world when I'm 50, I would like to battle with the decision of possibly retiring mm. at 50. You know, and, wow. and what does that mean? Retiring in your business, retiring comedy, retiring movies? I think it means just sitting down. Mm. I think it means sitting down, you know, being in quarantine and being with my family on a day to day, being with the wife, the kids and the the dogs and, and just, just being here, you know, that's a, it's a nice feeling. And at some point when you, when you get on the other side of life, uh, for me, I want to, I want to slow down Mm. to enjoy that other side. You know, the first half, come out the gates, come out the gates and we're running. Yeah. And, and at 50, if we are blessed enough to get there, that's the start of the other side. Mm -hmm. So what does that other side look like? What do you want it to look like? What do you want to do? I think for me, I just wanted to be a little slower. Did you start to have that perspective after the car accident and, you know, you had the car accident, then you came back for a month or two, then quarantine. Mm -hmm. And in your book, you really talk about actually the importance of solitude. Did you come to that importance in the last year or is that something you've always had? Because you're this outgoing, you know, personality, but I know that your, your alone time is so important to you as well. I I think it was definitely enhanced and enhanced after that. It definitely it definitely was much bigger. It was it was this just just shows you that you're not in control. Mm. You know, and when you're not in when you're not in control or when you think you are it's even a bigger mind fuck. It's like, what was I, I'm tripping. I'm fucking tripping. Like at any point in time, this can be over. It all can be over. So make sure that you just take the time to let those know, or those closest to you around you know what they mean to you and, and how much you love them, et cetera. Like this is a, it's something that you should make a priority and that you should just yeah. be conscious of. And I think there was a period of time where I wasn't, yeah. where, I, where I lost that. And that, that for that, I'm glad that, you know, I had a nice little eye opener. Yeah. You know what I mean? Of course. It, it came right on time. Now, you and The Rock's relationship is very public. You've done so many projects together. He's got a few years on you. Yeah. And I'm curious, what's the biggest lesson he's taught you that is actually you put into practice and you've seen in great results in your personal life, career, business from his teaching to you mentorship? And what's the lesson you taught him for his personal life or career that you saw help him tremendously over the last half a decade? Well, you know what he is, man? He he really is a hard worker and he's he's a guy that's adamant about about breaking new ground, mm. about doing, doing the unthinkable, you know, like he's, he goes after it. And I, and I only, I can only credit him. I can only take my hat off to him because he's doing it at the highest level possible. Yeah. And he's still going, he's still pushing. 
still pushing. So, you know, you look, you, I said time after time again, we're all writing a fucking book, man. That's what you do. We're all writing a book. And at the end of the day, when you close that book, what do you want people to know about you? What, what is your story? And, yeah. you know, you can make it as dope as you want or you can make it as uninteresting as you want. Some people yeah. have the best book on earth, others don't. Yeah. Was there, any, was there anything you taught him early on that you've seen him apply and actually implement? He's learned, it <laughs> He's learned it all from me. He's learned it all from you. Yeah, I teach him everything. Uh, <laughs> no, man, we're just we're just you guys that that are so we're we're so open with one another, and we really talk and we give. It's not necessarily advice; we just give each other information, mm-hmm. and and we both utilize it, you know. And and we are there's a there's a supportive competitive nature. Mm. that exists there you say supportive competitive competitive nature yes yes so in other words it's like hey man i'm doing this hey i was thinking about doing i think i'm gonna do it too Mm. hey i just did you know what man that's a great idea i'm gonna do it too it's not within the i'm gonna be better than you and do it's not that it's you know and this is what our our world suffers from you know people feel like they gotta be the best so they gotta be number one but there's so much room out here for so many it's just information is the only thing that's limiting the opportunities. Yeah. You know, everybody wants to be, keep it a secret. Everybody wants to keep the road a secret or how a secret. And it shouldn't be. It shouldn't be. There, there is no gold star that's given at the end of the day for being the only one that meant. So would you say you're more about collaboration over competition? Uh, I'm, about, I'm about winning. And, and, and winning, it's a bigger win when you show other people how to win. Mm-hmm. That's a bigger win. Yeah. Opening up a door and allowing some people to come through the door and figure it out so they can open up more doors, that's a win. Yeah. But that's my way of thinking. People just don't understand that there's a world um, that has space for a lot. And it's just about us being open with sharing how. And, you know, you look at now, right? The pandemic hit. How many hundreds of millions of dollars were raised for world hunger? I mean, Mm -hmm. hundreds of millions, right? Why does it take a pandemic? Mm -hmm. Why does it take a pandemic for us to understand that, you know, starvation is real. Figuring out food is real. Some people's needs are real. Yeah. People don't have. It takes the most drastic thing to get the attention of when it shouldn't. This is this could be a cycle of what you raise money for, whether it's once a month, whether it's twice a month, whatever. I mean, world hunger is a serious thing. The water in Flint, Michigan has been dirty and filthy for how long? A long time. And they've had a problem with fixing it. But we raised 400 million or whatever through the course of a pandemic to fix and solve. Yeah, exactly. Just showing you, it, it, uh, you can dig into the simplicity of just thinking and logic that we complicate so much. Yeah. Uh, a couple of final questions for you, Kevin. I appreciate your time, man. Um, I know how powerful and important your mom was in your life. And you talk about her openly a lot in your series and and everything. What would you say is the overall greatest lesson she taught you that you really lean on today, even more so than when you were younger? To not do anything halfway. You're going to do something, give it your all. Mm. We don't do anything halfway. There's no value in that. Yeah. There is no value in doing something halfway. Either give it your all or don't do it. Don't do it. Yeah. Plain and simple. This is a question I ask everyone at the end. It's called the three truths. So I'd like you to imagine that you're as old as you want to be, but one day you got to, you got to turn the lights off and you got to call it quits and Mm -hmm. you've accomplished every dream you can imagine. Everything has come true. 
and you've lived as long as you want to live. Um, you've created everything, written tons of books, more audio books will come out. But for whatever reason, you got to take all of your content and information with you. And mm -hmm. no one has access to your words, movies, content anymore. But you got to leave behind three things you know to be true about all the lessons you've learned in life to the world. And this is all we would have. Okay. What, would you, what would you say are your three truths that you would share to us? Three truths. Three truths. Three things that this is all the world would have to remember of you as lessons to live with from your life. As lessons to live with in life. Three things. Live, love, and laugh. Mm. I say it all the time. Hashtag it. I mean it. Yeah. Live, yeah. love, laugh. Do those things as much as you possibly can. I think you're 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 setting yourself up for a nice for a nice future in life. Yeah. I've got this is my final question. Before I ask it, I want to acknowledge you for a minute, Kevin, for your incredible generosity, the humor you bring to the world, the uh, and more so the work ethic. I think in your Twitter bio, you don't even say what you do as this, you know, big entertainer. You just say, I work hard. I work hard. And I think that's something that you don't have to be the best in the world at some skill, but you can be really good or great. It's just putting in that hard work for decades mm -hmm. and your mm -hmm. example, you know, you're not perfect. You make mistakes, but your example to keep showing up consistently is something I really admire and acknowledge about you. And if people know that uh, and see that, then uh, I hope that inspires them as well. And in this audio book by audible, the decision overcoming today's BS for tomorrow's success. You dive in and talk about all these things that are just so inspiring. Everyone needs to get this. I'm telling you, I could not stop listening to how funny it is, how relatable it is and how insightful it is. And uh, I want everyone to go download this right now. It's out now when this comes out, what do you, what do you want people to know about the decision and why they need to get this? It is a great listen. It's so funny. I'm not here to, to, over persuade or oversell guys i'm telling you right now it's it's really good you know i don't uh i don't i don't like i said i don't do anything to do it halfway so mm -hmm. uh if i can't do it at a thousand percent i don't do it at all the book is fucking really good it's powerful man I, really it, good. it's hard for me to get through an audio book and i couldn't stop turning it uh listening to it and i was gonna say turn the page but yeah. click the button for the next <laughs> chapter um it's only on audible guys you got to get yes. it everyone who listens to this show it's going to be perfect for you so make sure to go to audible download it or you can go to kevin hart's uh, and make sure to tag kevin hart over on instagram when you buy it post it on twitter tag kevin let you know that you listen to it from the school of greatness um final question for you it, before anything else, is there anything else you want to share before I ask the last question? I'm five four. I'm six four, so it gives go. something in common. There you go. He's got a, he's got a little gap there. <laughs> <laughs> Final question for you, Kevin. I hope we get to do this again in the in the in, in the future in uh, in person someday. Uh, but my final question is: What's your definition of greatness? My def definition of greatness. Happiness within what you do. That's what I would say. That's a, that's a nice definition of greatness. Mm. If there's happiness within what you do, then you achieve a high level of greatness because that's what, that's what a lot of people are searching to find. That thing that makes them happy. So if you found that and you're doing that, take my hat off to you. Mm. I take my hat off to you and I say, congrats. And to those that haven't, uh, I'm just telling you that one day you will and use the thing that you're doing now that you may not be the happiest with to get you to the place that you will find that joy. Mm. Kevin Hart, my, my man, thank you so much for your time. I appreciate your wisdom and your experience and uh, okay. hope to do some future uh, for the next okay. book. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you, man. Appreciate it, man. We'll talk Appreciate to you soon. It. Thanks, Kevin. Right. If you enjoyed this episode with Kevin Hart, make sure to subscribe and leave a comment below. And if you want to watch an incredible interview I did with Kobe Bryant, check out this video right here. It's exciting when you win. It's exciting when you lose because the process should be exactly the same.
whether you win or you lose, is you go back and you look and you find things that you could have done better. You find things that you've done well that worked, 